Hi there, I'm Scott with Max Prop Saver. Max is a division of Brad's Killer Fishing Gear. It's our marine division. You might be familiar with Brad's. We do fishing lures, super baits, etc. So we have two products with Max. One you may be more familiar with than the other. That's the Prop Saver. So this will go on the back of your motor, wraps around, attaches to your skag plate, and it protects the prop. This is primarily used for your smaller motors, your kicker motors, your trolling motors, you know, things from two horsepower on up to nine, nine horsepower, and you can even go up to 15, but primarily for your smaller motors. Today, and we've done some install videos on the prop saver, but today we're gonna to be talking about the River Runner. So the primary purpose of the River Runner, opposed to the prop saver, is this will have some protection on your prop, but the primary purpose is to protect the front of your skag right along here. When you're running along full speed and maybe you're in choppy waves and there's that piece of wood or log or a piece of debris, or even when you're going in tight and you're just not expecting there to be any obstacles and there's that hidden log that you just didn't expect to see or that piling. So this will help deflect, it attaches on like this. This will help deflect that debris away from your skag and actually protect your skag. So products that we'll need today, obviously the River Runner. We have a tape measure. We have a drill with a quarter inch bit. We have a clamp. So I'm gonna be using just a white Crayola crayon uh, to mark with where the drill holes are. We have a 7 16 inch socket, a 7 16 inch wrench. We have some snips, WD-40, and then a bowl to, uh, to keep our nuts and bolts in. Okay, so the first step in installing the River Runner, take your snips, remove the zip tie, open the little baggie. So you've got a pressure plate, and that pressure plate is gonna mount to the left side of your skag, and your River Runner is gonna mount to the right side of the skag with bolts going through, holding both together. So we're gonna take these nuts and bolts, and we're gonna put them in a little dish there and we'll get started on mounting the River Runner. So we get a lot of questions on how to mount the River Runner and how high up on the skag and how far back it goes. So there's just a couple things, it's really easy. There's just a couple things you wanna pay attention to. So first of all, people ask quite a bit, does this bottom of the skag need to fit in that pocket exact? Uh, the answer is no, it does not. It can be up like that. Um, the main thing that you're looking for here in mounting the River Runner is that you're not up into the oil reservoir, which our screws are going to be down here, so they're well below this oil reservoir here. And the other thing is that it extends out past the back of the prop, so it will provide some protection for the prop. Again, the primary thing is to protect that skag if you've ever had a broken skag, you know what I'm talking about. It's, you know, a couple hundred bucks sometimes to, to replace the skag, get one welded on, all depends on how bad it is. But um, this will protect the front of that skag as well as portions of your prop. So since it's just me mounting this, um, sometimes it's helpful to have a second hand, but you certainly don't need one. And that's why, that's why I've got this clamp here. So you can clamp that into position. And once it's in there, the main things that you're looking for, again, that you've got good purchase on your skag, which we do, you see that where we're gonna drill here is not going into our oil reservoir, it's actually going right through the skag. It is covering back to the back of the prop. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you want at least a quarter inch between the bottom of your prop and the river runner. And here we've got well more than a quarter inch. This is a 115 horse Merc, and this is a prop saver size C. Um, we've got at least oh, an inch and a quarter there of clearance, so we're good there. So right now I'm gonna mark the holes. I'm gonna check for level, and that's what the tape measures for. 
we want to make sure that this line here is parallel with our cavitation plate. So just measure down, make sure we get the right measurement on each and adjust as necessary. Um, it's not screwed in yet, just holding on with a clamp. I just wanna make sure that this plate right here is parallel with our cavitation plate. That's key. So measure up. We are about 16, nine sixteenths there. And we're about 16 and 9 sixteenths there. Um, actually, we're right on 16 and 9 sixteenths. So if you see in here, inside the, uh, along the front skag, the front skag, different motors have different angles of skags. So the front skag isn't sitting tight against the river runner in all spots. But that's okay. The reason I'm mounting it this high is because I want to protect as much of that skag as possible here. So we're going to have our plate and our mount, and that's going to hold that tight. So that's not going to be an issue. So don't be concerned if it's not fully tight there and it's not fully tight here. That's okay. Main thing is cover as much of the skag as you can. Get it level here and here. Take your measurement and then have a quarter inch, at least a quarter inch, gap in between your prop and the river runner and as you can see once again the river runner is protected on all sides the river runner goes back behind the prop and is protecting the prop on all sides okay so now that these are parallel here and here we're going to take our crayon and we're going to mark where the holes go so you have two options here you can either mark these Take the river runner off and drill, or just drill straight through here. Right now I've got a clamp on, I know everything is measured perfect, so I'm just going to go ahead and take my quarter inch drill bit and drill straight through. Just going to be real careful not to go back and forth, but to go straight in, because I don't want to enlarge this hole any at all. Then to ease the drilling process, you might just want to spray a little lube. Here I've got WD-40. Uh, but there's other lube that you can spray on, on just the tip of your drill bit. Just make sure you keep it cool. You're going through metal, it's aluminum, but, and this is a metal drill meant for this, but uh, you just wanna keep it cool and make sure it's going through smoothly. All right, so when I'm drilling here, you can notice I've got my hand on the other side. Just wanna make sure, obviously, that your thumb, fingers, and hand are clear of the hole that's gonna pop through on the other side. So. I'm just providing a little bit of pressure from the bottom here of the plate towards the drill, just assisting the clamp there is all I'm doing. So one thing we recommend before mounting river runner or prop saver is we've got these lock nuts here. And what we'll do is we'll take a little WD-40 and just shoot it right in the lock nut there. And it's not gonna last very long, but the purpose of this is that it will help when you thread it on the first time so that these lock nuts don't gall, because that's, that's the last thing you want to have happen is, is for these to gall. So just a little lubrication on there will help them slide on and get a nice tight fit. All right, so the next step is we're actually going to attach the river runner with our nuts and bolts that we have right here. So again, you want to attach it to the right side, and this pressure plate is going to go on the left side. So it's going to attach like that. So we'll line this up with our holes. Take our bolts through there, and like that, we'll just go through each one and line them up and start tightening them together. We're gonna attach the pressure plate on the other side. So all we do is line it up with the bolts, or the bolts that are already through, and then we're gonna go through an alternating fashion and tighten these together. So you don't want to just go tighten this one down and then this one. You actually want to go in alternating fashion. So I've got this one that's through more. I'm going to start driving this one here. We'll do the same thing as we tighten up on our nuts on top of these bolts. Get that alternating fashion. So just like with any part on a car, you do that so that you don't over tighten one area and you just want it to go on smooth. So that one, that one, now I'm gonna go down to this corner one here. Now up to this corner one here. And you're just gonna do that all the way around. So now that those are all the way through, we'll just start attaching our lock nuts. 
Again, just going in alternating fashion, getting each one on. Real important that you don't want to over tighten these. Main thing is, right now I'm just getting them finger tight. After that, we're going to snug them up to the point it's tight with the wrench, nice and firm. All these are finger tight now. So now I'm going to take my socket and my wrench and I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these up. Again, go in alternating fashion. So this one down in the corner here, it's a little tight to get my socket in there. So I've got two 7 16 wrenches. Put one on one side on the nut and then the other one on this side. So this just happens to be a ratchet wrench. So that makes it really nice. And uh, just go ahead and tighten that up there. All right, so now these are tightened. So you can see that there's different lengths of bolt coming through and that's okay because you've got different widths on your skag. It's wider here than it is here and it's wider up top than it is down below. So it's going to make sense that these are going to stick out just a little more than these. But you can see we've got a nice good purchase on every nut and every bolt. And with those threaded lock nuts, um, we're good to go there. We're fully installed. Just one quick note, if you ever do end up taking this off and replacing for any reason, we generally recommend that you replace these lock nuts at the same time. They've got a thread, they're threaded onto um, what these are going at right now in terms of the uh, rotation of the bolt. And it just makes sense to get a new one each time so you make sure it's locked in. All right, so installation of the River Runner is complete. We're real fortunate today in that we've got a lower unit here. Um, a friend of mine has got a, uh, a jet on his boat, so he takes the lower unit off, runs his jet in low water, and then he can put the uh, prop back on. So made it an install easy here because we've got this bracket and we can mount it here. But keep in mind, this can be mounted on any motor, um, whether it's sitting down or, or tilted up. Generally, it's easiest I found when the motor is sitting down in uh, just a, an upright position. So, but you can see we're covering the front of the skag here. That's fully protected. We're back past the edge of the prop. We've got at least a quarter inch clearance here. So the only other thing you might want to keep in mind is just because of the skag dimensions and the thickness of the skags, um, depending on how much clearance you have here, you may want to consider putting just a shimming washer inside here just another stainless washer just to take up some gap if you have it but that's the river runner so we have four models of river runners this is our largest uh, this covers everything 75 horsepower and above uh, this is another one here that uh, this will cover your your nine nines to your 30 horse and we go all the way down to, to three horse. And again, that's an addition to our, uh, our prop savers as well. So appreciate you guys watching. Any questions, please check us out. Um, you can find these propsavers.com. It's a Max product we sell online. We also sell through distributors uh, and boat shops all throughout the country, retailers. And also if you have questions on install, um, the boat shops that we sell to are really good about helping our customers. You know, wherever you're located, feel free to reach out. If you have some questions, ask them. If you're not sure of a dealer in your area that you can talk to, um, give us a call and we'll help you out. We'll let you know who that is and uh, you can get some help with the install. So thank you very much for watching. Fish tight, fish tight to the bank, close to the bank, Fish Max.